Ciao ragazzi, ciao ragazze, hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Um, we are keeping on, keeping on with our uh, Route to Clash videos and today we'll get to know all about Age of Sigmar in Sweden. And we have with us our new friend, Adam from Sweden. Adam, how are you doing? I'm doing great, thank you. All right, great. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to have you on the channel because you are the first uh, people from up north we have here. So it's going to be really cool to understand how you guys uh, go around and play the game. Should be cool. Well, it, it's a very interesting topic and I hope and I can enlighten you on it. For sure, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, you guys, I think I think Sweden is a pretty cool country. I mean, from a, a foreigner perspective, um, yeah, I mean, I've been once and I've really enjoyed it. So you, you guys are really cool. You have cool metal music as well, so. That has to mean something. Thank you. <laughs> Not sure if you like music, but... <laughs> sure do. Cool. Right, so, um, the, the first question that I, I'd like to ask is uh, just to, to get to know you better a little bit. And uh, it's just, how, how was the, the being for you? How did you start to play uh, Warhammer or Age of Sigmar specific? Well, uh, Warhammer I started playing at around 10 years of age. Uh, like most people encountering it in a toy store or games workshop store or something similar and then just playing with the models as if they were toys and gradually learning the game over the years and uh, Age of Sigmar in particular I found with when it was released I started playing it the same week it came out so I've been playing it constantly since release basically I uh, immediately uh, enjoyed the transition from 8th edition to Age of Sigmar and have stuck with it ever since. Mm -hmm. So you did play fantasy battles before? Yeah, from 5th edition. Nice. What armies did you play? Well, my favorite army was always the Warriors of Chaos. Cool. But I also doubled in the Skaven. Nice. Cool. Yeah, I mean, th they're both armies that... Uh... That ended up being in uh, Age of Sigma later on, and they they both had. I mean, Skaven were very strong when the book came out as well. So, I don't know if you played if you played them back in. Uh, I mean, in Two Age of Sigma as well. Well, not really. I haven't played Skaven all that much because uh, in the early days they were very powerful, what with the uh, storm fiends and mortal wound spam and everything, and I don't enjoy playing overly powerful armies. Cool. Nice. Yeah. 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 Makes sense. Um, so like, uh, so you said you enjoyed the transition. Like, was it, did, did you have lots of people around you that were like rage quitting the game or any, anything like that? Or what was well, the, the change well taken from everybody? I don't know. Initially, the new game wasn't well received in Sweden. And most of the old Warmer Fantasy players stayed with the Warmer Fantasy and eventually developed the Ninth Age game that has a core of Swedish players in it. Oh. But uh, lots of new people started playing Sigmar. People that had been out of the hobby for 10 years, 5 years, 15 years, came back and started playing the game. So it was essentially a new community that was created that didn't share all that many people with the old community, so to speak. Hmm. So, so you have lots of lots of young players, I, I, I would guess, in Sweden. Well, not necessarily young players. I mean, many people who are my age, in their thirties, who had a hiatus of five or ten years where they didn't play, they hmm. returned to the game when uh, in the early days of Age of Sigmar which led to the new community having a completely different spirit from the old one. Much more uh, positive, much more focused on fun, whereas the old one was more of a grumbling, competitive sort. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was... Yeah, uh, the good thing about the start of Video Sigma, I think the rules could be pretty wonky, but it was quite an access accessible game for everybody. So that's why I think uh, you had lots of people not necessarily young of age, but uh, young to the game that just got into it because it was pretty easy to to get into it. Uh, especially since fantasy had like those huge role books that were really hard to uh, to master. I think. Sure. Cool. So you said you said you, you you don't like to play really powerful armies. What are you playing right now? I mean, what are your favorite armies in Age of Sigmar? 
well, I don't like playing useless armies either. <laughs> My preference is for the armies that are just below the top layer. Cool. So not not playing Seraphon or uh, Tsinch armies like that recently, but rather playing armies that are below the fold, so to speak. And uh, recently I've been uh, toying around with Archeon. Nice. I've got my, my Archeon fully painted in a, in a closet here. I've never actually played it, but I'm, it's ready to go. <laughs> it was Amazing the same model. for me. I bought him when he was released mm -hmm. and painted him and then left him in the closet for several years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I finally brought him out of the closet to collect some skulls. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, makes sense. That was That's what he likes to do. So <laughs> makes sense to use him like that. Cool. So, uh, starting to talk about Sweden as a country in general, um, I was curious to know what what does what does it look like to play Age of Sigmar in Sweden? Um, I think you are into competitive gaming since you are, I mean, captain of the the, the former ETC team now Elseworlds team. Like, what is the competitive scene in Age of Sigmar in Sweden? Well, there's before and after COVID, obviously. Yeah, sure. And uh, in the before COVID days we had a very active tournament scene with several large tournaments some approaching 100 attendants and now in the post covid scene we don't really know how that will look like because we're just starting to open up for larger events but we're hopeful that we can recover the kind of momentum that we had two years ago but uh, the thing about sweden is that the distances in this country are quite large mm -hmm. i mean the the closest gaming club to me is an hour away. Oh, so uh, right. that's that's the kind of distances that we have to deal with. So uh, it's very common for players to fly by airplane to tournaments or take the mm -hmm. train for six hours to go to a tournament. Mm -hmm. And uh, that has meant that uh, the scene in Sweden is quite split between different regions because of the di distances. Mm. Yeah, we, you guys are a long country, just like us, so it can be really, really a, a long, a long thing to uh, to travel like that. Yeah, for sure. Do, do, is there like m more activity, more games and that stuff around the bigger cities? You think? Well, our biggest event so far was held in the capital of Stockholm, and that brought together people from all across the country. Mm -hmm. So we can do that on occasion as well. Cool. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I I I, I'm, I don't know if I'm if I'm correct, but uh, didn't Rob from the Honest for Gamer came to Sweden for a tournament? Uh, to... Yes, that was that was that one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was really cool. I mean, I watched some games, um, some streaming games, and it, it looked really cool. I mean, cool armies, cool venue, cool tables, and everything. Really nice. Yeah, fortunately, I only came in second place. Well, out of how many people? Hundred. Well, <laughs> that's pretty good. I mean, yeah, <laughs> coming second probably sucks when you well, uh, were see, that, that close to being first. I I won all my games, but the tiebreaker was the auxiliary objectives. Yes. And everybody decided to be a dick to me, so they picked <laughs> the, one, the ones that were very easy to do against me. So I did. Uh -huh. I wasn't able to uh, stop them, like the one that just has you do a charge from nine inches away, things like that. Yeah. So we yeah. stole my victory. Yeah, it was uh, the old um, Eden Agendas. I remember those. Exactly. Not that old, but yeah. Cool. So, two years um, old. Yeah, exactly. Two years old. Um, so, so um, you said you had big events. Like, how many people would attend like a two-day tournament for you guys? Well, our mid-sized events had maybe 30 to 40 people. Right. That would be a regular type event. Pretty cool. And um, like here in Italy, we have like an, uh, an organization of people that are into competitive gaming. And we have this sort of um, tournament circuit that we have all over the country and that contributes to a ranking system. Do you guys have like a sort of ranking, competitive ranking system for tournaments or not really? Well we opted not to do one of those because mm -hmm. we thought that would be damaging to the spirit of the tournaments 
uh, it would lead to a greater focus on winning as opposed to having a good time. Mm -hmm. So we in the ETC slash iOS Worlds team, we maintain an unofficial ranking just mm -hmm. to keep track of who's doing good. But that's not for public consumption because we feel that would not uh, not be good for the spirit of the game. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Makes sense. I mean, uh, it is a competitive, I mean, can be a competitive game, but it's it's always important to, to, to keep in mind it's it's a game as well. So uh, it's important to keep well, exactly. uh, that spirit. For us, for us, the important thing to distinguish us between from the old community of uh, Warmer Fantasy and the 40k players is that we want to have a more relaxed atmosphere that's more uh, noob friendly, friendly to beginner. <laughs> And uh, and we don't think that our public ranking would help with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, makes makes sense to me, absolutely. Cool. So I was I was um, I was asking you uh, the fact that uh, um, recently I was thinking about the fact that you guys took took place I mean took part uh, in the uh, AOS Six Nations, right? Sure. That's a pretty cool event. I mean. With all the British-speaking, um, English-speaking countries, that's pretty cool. How was it for you? Well, we attended the last uh, three times, actually. Nice. Uh, we were probably initially invited in because uh, Jonathan knew the organizers. <laughs> uh, he's very connected to the Honest Wargamer and that sort of crowd. <laughs> and that's probably why we got invited rather than the French. We've participated ever since, and it's a great, great event. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like a pretty cool event. And it's also a, a team event for people who might not know. And uh, yeah, I think it's a great experience, especially uh, when you're talking about all these uh, EX, ETC, now Elseworlds Worlds events, which are just team events. So it's good practice as well, right? Yeah, and it's the same as ETC in that England always wins. <laughs> So Darren, if you're watching this, you heard it from Adam. You guys will win. Uh, we we, sh we no, shouldn't not... even participate. <laughs> we're, we're, we're trying to stop them, and uh, we came in second. We've come in second place at Six Nations, and we came in third place at ETC. So we're doing all right, but nice. uh, we can't we can't seem to beat the English. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the, Darren and Tom talked to me last last week, and. Uh, they said that they they said that they feel like they have a target on their back. So, yeah, they you're just confirming sure. it. <laughs> so we are coming for you guys. We're coming, we're coming for them specifically. Yeah. If we lose, if we lose the event but take down the English, then we will count that as a win for us. <laughs> Makes sense. Oh yeah, yeah. Nice. So uh, speaking about team events, um, the last real topic that I wanted to talk about with you was, uh, how, how is your teams we didn't organize like is, is there like a selection or anything like that well historically our selection has been a mix of looking at the merit of the players mm -hmm. as far as how they performed in tournaments and a healthy dose of nepotism <laughs> and were you were, were you the one behind all this or like is there anything anybody else who uh, helps you select the players well, uh, historically, the players have been selected on the basis of who knows who in mm -hmm. the beginning. Because in the first year of us attending Six Nations, the pool of players in Sweden was quite small. So it was basically a matter of who wanted to go and then they got to go. Mm -hmm. But uh, as the scene has grown over the years, we've developed metrics like tournament results and etc to figure out who has the best claim to uh, rep to be able to represent Sweden in the at the event. Sure. Sure, cool. And um, so your team is ready, right? You you have the members and all that? Indeed I do. I have all six members ready since cool. a year ago when we were planning on attending ETC last year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, lo uh, lots of guys, lots of the guys that I talked to uh, we're talking about this, the fact that the team was ready for last year, so the event didn't happen, so it just got uh, postponed to this year. And yeah. Yeah, we um, replaced two guys that couldn't make it this year, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. the core of the team is the team that we planned to take last year, basically. 
nice nice and yeah i was talking to i think jordan from canada and he was talking about the fact that some of the guys from the team were uh, like living in, on the other side of the country and th do you guys have like this issue from distance as you were talking about before from the traveling about tournaments or going to clubs and stuff well if i want to visit the player that lives furthest away from me that's a eight hour trip so oh. yeah it's an issue for sure but the way we are dealing with that is by having lots of meetings over uh, video conference meetings and playing games, practice games over tabletop simulator. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that helps a lot. That's a huge tool, especially right now. I mean, especially in the past months during COVID and lockdowns, it was it just had this boom of like tournaments and stuff. So yeah, it's, a, it's an important tool for team practice, I would say. Uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. Nice. And uh, uh, did you have like any any chance to to practice a little bit in person as well, or not really? Yes, right actually, now? we've been running we've been running a Swedish Masters for oh. the last few months, <clears throat> where we've been. Excuse me. No worries. <clears throat> where we've been running regional championships. So my region of Sweden has its own division. And then the north has its division, the south has its division, the east has its own division. So I've gotten quite a few games with people here locally. And nice. then there will be a, a sort of a finals in uh, Stockholm in uh, August. Cool. So it's really close. I mean, like a month and a half apart. Yeah. Cool. So uh, I've gotten a, a, about uh, six or seven games in in person in the last six months well not bad not bad at all i mean i i've had like i don't know how, how, how the pandemic is going for you guys but i've had like the last six months i probably played like three or four times maximum in person i mean so yeah it's pretty cool <laughs> well we have we'll take what we can get yeah that's it that's it and and fingers crossed uh everything will be good for september ready to go have let's you already... hope so yeah have you have you guys already been to italy or have you in person adam to italy mm -hmm. well i've personally been to italy several times to uh, rome and to the south south of the country but uh, never to milan so i look forward to uh, doing some tourism there in uh, <laughs> in uh, when i uh, when i attend the tournament Cool. I, uh, is is uh, is some of the the guys from the team coming for the singles as well, or are you just coming for the team event? No, I don't think we're coming for the singles. We don't want to reveal any of our secret <laughs> army or strategies or skills. We want to keep that uh, secret up until the day of the event. That's yeah. That's a sound strategy. Uh, makes sense. Absolutely. I won't be playing in the in the in the team, so I'm I'm definitely going to the singles tournament. And some of the guys, some of the guys from the team are coming. I'm not sure what armies they are taking though. Uh, it's just not, not a secret, but I, I have no idea. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it should be a really cool event. Uh, don't know if you've seen the the photos of the venue, but it looks really, really, really nice. Like a uh, yeah, industrial style brick uh, like place. Should be really cool. We should have right. lots of fun. <laughs> okay, Adam. Do you, I mean? Do you have like any final thoughts or shout outs or? Anything else you wanted to add? Well, my final thought is a warning to England that we are coming for them. And uh, we'd also like to uh, get back at the Americans. Those were the only two teams that beat us last time. So uh, we'd love to smash them into the dirt this time around. Well, you can count on our help for sure for this <laughs> because they are the big bad guys. And <laughs> Europe, I mean, no, not Europe, because England is in Europe, even though they don't really care about the European Union, but European Union versus, versus the rest of the world. <laughs> exactly. Let's let's cooperate to take them down. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay, Adam, it's been a blast to talk to you. And uh, thanks again. And uh, thank yeah, you. we'll thank keep you in touch. Well for, uh, thank you as well for doing these uh, interviews and building some hype for the event. Oh, sure. No worries. It's, it's really cool to to talk to all of you guys and uh it, it will be even cooler to meet up in september and play together right all right man have a good night and take care 
Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.